Welcome to Lesson 11D, Impact of Hoods on Ventilation Systems. Before we get into the details about the math and the equations of hood analysis, I want to just talk a little bit about the impact of hoods, first of all on ventilation systems, and then we'll talk about something called reach and capture area to measure hood effectiveness. Here's a problem that not many people realize. Let me take a room, it's a typical room like we've been talking about. Suppose you design the ventilation system. You have some supply air and you have some infiltration air coming in to this room. And then you have Q exhaust going out and some exfiltration coming out. And the ventilation system is designed for the room without a hood. But people remodel labs and they move things around. So suppose you add a hood into this room that takes air out of this room like this. So we're drawing out some hue of the hood. We still have some supply air coming in. We still have this ventilation system we had before with a QE and a QS, and we still have some infiltration and some exfiltration. I'll just draw that somewhere else here. The purpose of the hood, of course, is you have some source of contaminant. You're trying to draw that out. So it's drawing air out of the room. But what people don't take into consideration is the impact of this hood that you've added to an existing room that already was designed to be without a hood. And so you can sort of see what's going to happen here if you're thinking about it. If we get a low pressure inside the room, when you add the hood, you turn it on, you're drawing out air. There's a low pressure and you're sucking out air and sometimes it's much more air than QE. So some problems that can arise, you'll get more infiltration. So you would basically shut off your exfiltration. You wouldn't have any. You get more QS sucked in. That can affect other rooms in this ventilation system. If you take too much air out, if you're really sucking a lot of air out from the hood, you can have some other severe problems like QE can go backwards. Normally we have a supply and an exhaust, but you're sucking out all this volume flow rate. And so QE can actually go backwards here and start coming into the room. Why is that bad? Well, you're taking exhaust air from other rooms that should be going outside or being filtered and you're bringing that in. That's not good. You also get huge infiltration from under any doors, little gaps and stuff in the room. They'll be sucked in. You'll even hear it coming in. The bottom line is that this can be a problem for HVAC designers. And the problem is that when they designed the room, they didn't know that there would be a hood in there eventually. So the best thing is to know which rooms you're going to have a hood in in the first place. So design with hoods in mind, and they do that when they know those hoods are going to be put there in a new building. But the problem comes when you add a hood later. There's a lab on campus where they did exactly that. They added this hood retroactively in a room that had not been a lab, didn't need a hood before. And that's exactly the kind of thing that's happening in that room. When you turn this on, you're sucking in a lot of air and it comes into this funnel-shaped hood. And that air has to come from somewhere. So it's going to come in through doors, under the doors. It's going to come in through infiltration through the walls, etc. Here's another more practical example for your home, and that's a kitchen range hood. We've been doing some remodeling in our kitchen lately, and we, I actually installed a new hood. And all the rage these days is these stainless steel hoods that are very expensive and very high volume flow rate. So here's a picture of one of these new fancy range hoods. There's some huge ones. The problem with these is the same as I've just been talking about. In fact, for kitchen hoods, there are rules. It turns out that in PA, Pennsylvania, the max flow rate for a kitchen hood is 400 CFM. And I've seen some other states have different limits. I've seen 600. Now, why do they say that? Well, some of the same issues that I just talked about, you're going to have more infiltration. That's going to cost you money. You're getting more QS sucked in. QE can go backwards. One of the big problems in a house, and this can be really significant, is that you can get what they call back drafting of furnaces or fireplaces. So imagine you put this big mama of a range hood in there and it's just sucking all this air out of the room. Where's it coming from? It's coming from somewhere. So you will increase infiltration. You put your whole house basically at a negative pressure. Back drafting is when you have a fireplace, let's say, or a wood burner stove or something like that with a chimney that goes outside. 
Of course, the air is supposed to go out like that when you're burning the wood. But if you have a significantly low pressure in the house, you can actually get the air coming down backwards and then leaking out. You know, there's always an opening in the back of a wood burner where the air is supposed to come in. You can get that coming out into your house. Then you get smoke filled in your house. It's very dangerous, actually, if you have backdrafting. Sometimes I get smoke coming backwards from my wood burner when I light it. That's because the wood burner is cold and there's no draft yet to draw the smoke up the chimney. Oh, thanks, Professor. So the rules, the regulations for codes are that if the CFM is greater than, let's use Pennsylvania 400 CFM, if you're an installer, you're required to have additional supply air. So you have to go to the ventilation system and have some kind of a flap that opens up or something like that that will take some air from outside and draw it in through the ventilation system to relieve that low pressure and prevent something like this from happening. I wanted to talk about a couple other terminologies here. There's something called REACH. It's defined as the size, really volume, of the region in front of or upstream of a hood where contaminants get drawn in. We call that the reach of the hood. Typically, if you have a funnel-shaped hood, like a kitchen range hood, and you're talking about a certain contaminant, these can be particles again or vapors, and we know that the air is coming in from all directions because of the candle effect. There's going to be a region called the reach, this area in here, that for that particular contaminant, this particular hood operating at a certain flow rate of the hood will be able to draw those contaminants in and anything outside of here will not be drawn into that hood. So that's called reach. There's something similar called capture area and that's a little bit different. It's defined as the area under a range hood above your stove. So this is for household purposes. They will draw a line from the corner of the hood down and then call this area the capture area, implying that if you have something on the stove like this, it'll be captured. And buoyancy helps. We'll talk about buoyant plumes later also. What I wanted to say was you'll find in the literature, if you do any studies about these range hoods, they always ask what size stove you have, and then they make sure that your hood is at least as wide as your stove. It actually would be better if this was even wider than your stove. But if you remember last time I showed you some fancy new round hood, and so the hood was like this and the stove was like this, it looks cool and all that, but that one would only have a capture area down there. And so if you're cooking something over here, it's probably going to not be captured by the hood. And that's all due to the candle effect. Some hoods will have a smaller hood, but they put on a flange. A flange helps a little like we talked about previously, but it's better to have the capture area being as big as the stove itself. You can make the funnel bigger this applies not just to cooking, but to uh, whatever chemistry you're doing or something. And this is a stove or some other table where you're doing some chemistry. Sorry for the poor drawing. But my point is, if you put a big hood like that, you will capture all these fumes. Yes, that would be better. But look what you've just done. You've blocked the vision so larger hoods can block visual access. So these are all some of the problems that you encounter. Just a personal note. When I was remodeling my kitchen, we were looking at hoods. We have the kind where it's up against the wall. So here's our stove, and we were putting in this hood that has a pipe that goes up into the attic and then out. And I was looking into them. I wanted to have a bigger reach and a bigger capture area. But I found that some of the hoods I was looking at were actually fairly deep. And I did some measurements. I put some cardboard up there to see what would happen. And it turns out that my wife would have been okay because her head would have been about here, but my head would have been about here. And so I would have been hitting my head and I would have locked my vision if I got one of these really deep hoods. So we ended up getting a smaller one that was about the same capture area as the stove. And it seems to be working pretty well. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. One, two, three. That's all there is to it.